Greetings, Bass Kateers, Josh Vosgreen here, and today I'm going to teach you a chordal exercise that I actually wrote for myself to practice to work on some chord voicings that I don't use very often, just to get more comfortable with them. So I think that you will get a lot out of this, just like I have been. Um, it's going to work out your left hand super hard, you'll get a little plucking practice in there, and maybe you'll get some new chord voicings to play with on your own later. So download the PDF for sheet music and tablature plus left hand fingerings, which are really important in this case. Let me just play it for you so you can hear what it sounds like and then I will explain what's going on. And of course, this is where we find out if I can even play the thing. <laughs> Here we go, one, two, one, two, three, four. the basic idea. So it's just four chords looping around, a couple of them last longer than the other ones. Okay, so you got the sheet music and tablature ready, hopefully. Um, so let's begin. We'll just talk through each chord and then we'll worry about the rhythm and stuff. So chord number one, just a straight up B major chord. So uh, a little bit of backstory. I play chords on bass a lot, just on my own practicing for fun and also even uh, find places to do them in gigs sometimes, even though generally you're playing single notes as a bass player. But I tend to do a lot of three and even two note voicings just because it's easy to make them not muddy on the bass and oftentimes you don't want to fill up this much space. But I wanted to have the technical facility to be able to play these when I want to and I found I was a little sloppy with some of these. So um, I challenged myself to get better at these four chord voicings. So the first one I think is the easiest for me anyway. It's just a B major chord, root fifth octave major 10th, which is just the third up an octave. Don't be scared by the double digit numbers. So um, fingering on this, um, there's probably another way to do it besides how I'm doing it, but this is probably the most standard fingering and I think it works the best. So you go index, ring, pinky, middle. So index and middle are hitting the outside notes and then you go ring and pinky on the inside notes. There, there's one other way to do it that <laughs> a friend of mine does sometimes. It works better in the upper register, but you can actually slant your index finger and grab the root and the tenth. I, I don't recommend that in this case. It works better like if you're up here. Maybe you're grabbing a ninth too because it kind of twists your hand. Anyway, so one, three, four, two, fingering wise. I will we'll worry about the right hand in a second. For now, just do, do whatever plucks the four strings and also pluck them one at a time. Make sure you're getting a clean note out of them. So as always, it's really important to aim towards the end of the fret, okay? So if your finger's back here, you're gonna get that kind of stuff going on. So you wanna make sure you're on a good position on the fret. Uh, let's move on to chord number two, which is a D sharp dominant seven. Now, why are we bothering with a D sharp? Because we're in the key of B major. The third is D sharp, not E flat. That would be a diminished fourth, and we don't want diminished fourths. Word, so um, I play dominant seven chords all the time, but I always leave out the fifth. Either, either the uh, E position voicing or the, the A position voicing. So I wanted to get myself used to putting the fifth in there too. So the way I'm fingering this is, let's see, how am I doing? Yeah, I'm going index, pinky, middle, ring. So index on the E, uh, <laughs> I almost called it an E flat. Jazz instincts, index on the D sharp, pinky on the A sharp, middle on the C sharp, and then ring on the, I guess we're gonna have to call that an F double sharp if we're really gonna be and harmonically correct here, but you can think of it as a G if you want to. Okay, so there's your D sharp seven. Then we're gonna go to an E six, just one, five, six, major 10. Um, and I'm going middle finger, pinky, index, ring. And this one's actually a, a nice easy fingering because it's just one finger per fret, right? Just lay your fingers out like this. Index finger goes on the 11th, middle finger goes on the 12th, ring finger goes on the 13th, and pinky goes on the 14th frets, respectively, on their different strings. See, see what I'm saying? So it's, that's kind of a cool fingering there. And this is a chord that, again, I don't use a lot. If I want to play a sixth chord, a lot of times I'll just pick the fifth or the sixth at a time. So I wanted to get used to doing this full 1, 5, 6, 10 voicing. Um, and, uh, and then same thing for chord number four, which is an E minor six. We take the same three bottom notes and then take that major third down to a minor third or a minor 10th really in this case. And this is what I find to be the most difficult chord because you gotta cram your ring finger back there. 
um, and I'm really not accustomed to this chord voicing. I think that um, if any of you have seen that that old Jonas Helborg chord basics book, it's like printed on really narrow paper, and it's just got like tons of chord voicings, but doesn't tell you anything about like how to actually use them. I think this is one of the voicings that's in that book, and I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, ugh. I don't know if I'm gonna get my hands around that, but I, I decided I wanted to give it a try. So it's a neat voicing. It's neat to have that major second between the fifth and the sixth, and then a little more space between the outside voices. So the major sixth is probably gonna come a little easier than the minor sixth. And if there's another fingering for these that works for you, absolutely go for it. For me, I don't love this fingering, but I, I don't have an idea for a better one. If you take the fifth out of these voicings, they're super easy. It's really easy to wrap your hand around. It's getting the twist over to the fifth that makes these hard. So working on four note voicings is really the name of the game here. So you're not gonna be able to just launch in and play this rhythmically immediately. What I recommend you do is just practice making the shapes over and over. Don't worry about the rhythm. So make the B major, just pluck each note. When you're practicing chord voicings, you wanna make sure you pluck each note individually so that they're all coming out clearly. Same thing if you're learning chords on guitar. Make the D sharp seven. Make sure you got four, ah, see? Hear that? So, so uh, I hear an issue, so now I wanna go in and diagnose it. So I'm getting a little buzz on my F double sharp. Um, so I look and see my finger is a little too far back on the fret. I'm here instead of here. So I'm getting that instead of that. So work on spacing those out a little bit more. Maybe <laughs> shove, a, shove a wedge or something in there if you have a tool bench nearby. Uh, and then go to my major six, go to my minor six, and then continue the process. Make sure I'm getting clean notes every time. Just over and over and over and over is a great way to get used to new chord voicings. And um, real quick, sneak peek, how to do this on your own, just come up with a few chord voicings that you'd like to be comfortable with that you're not, make a progression out of them, and then drill it over and over. It's like playing music, and it's also like practicing. So much fun. Um, okay, so those are the four chord voicings. I'm rambling a little bit in this video. I hope that's okay with you. We're just practicing together. It's fun. Uh, plucking. I also wanted to um, get a little more comfortable doing really quick string crossing with just my two fingers because I tend to incorporate my thumb and ring finger a lot when I'm doing a lot of string crossing, which has been a really great tool for me over the years, but I also see how that's caused me to be a little bit weaker with just the index and middle for certain situations. So I was wanting to kind of force myself not to use my plucking, uh, my Borg <laughs> plucking augmentation tools and, um, and just use the index and middle. So the way I pluck this when I demonstrated it for you earlier is just index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle. So just index on the low note every time and then the middle's alternating on the high notes. Just because that's the pattern I wanted to practice. So I recommend you give that a try to see how it feels. But you can also do something a little more sensible like do a thumb one, two, three setup. Um, just kind of like how sometimes you finger one finger per fret, you do one finger per string uh, for your plucking hand. So you go thumb one, thumb two, thumb three, thumb two, thumb one. Or you could just go thumb index the whole time. However you want to pluck it is really fine. So assuming you've given this a little work and gone through the chords on your own, let's try this at um, a slow down tempo in rhythm. So here's our quarter notes. So we'll do eighth notes to that. Da, 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 da. One, two, three, four. So uh, I'll just quickly go through my diagnostics of my own playing. I heard um, I got a buzz on this E on I think the E major 6 the first time around. And I think it was actually, this is the other thing that will cause buzz, so I'm actually glad I made this mistake. Besides the positioning thing, even if you're here, if you're not pressing hard enough, then you get, you get that buzzy sound too. So you need to be in the right position and applying 
uh, pressure at the threshold where the string doesn't buzz against the fret. So you just find that amount of pressure and try not to apply too much more pressure than that because then you're working for no reason. But in that case, I wasn't pressing hard enough on the E. And then the other main issue I have with this is just the, the uh, ring finger positioning getting from the major six to the minor six. So diagnose your own issues, okay? Go through each chord note by note, hear where you're getting buzz, see if it's a positioning thing or a pressure thing, and you'll be on your way to mastering these voicings. Let's give this another go now at a sort of medium-ish tempo. One, two, one, two, three, four. Cool, so how'd you do? Did you hear some buzz? What notes were they on? Was it a positioning thing or a pressure thing? Personally, uh, I'm mostly having ring finger issues on those G string notes. So a lot of times when I play these, these voicings without the fifth, I, I uh, slant my hand a little bit more. So now coming straight on, I'm just not quite getting in position as fast as I want to. One other thing you can watch for when you're working on chord voicings, especially when you're doing four note chord voicings, because you just got a lot of fingers in the mix, four, four fingers to be precise, um, is bending your strings, okay? This is more of an issue on guitar because the strings bend more easily, and especially if you're a bass player occasionally picking up a guitar, like moi, then your hands are just like crushing the strings and bending them all over the place because you're used to <laughs> bass strings. So um, on either instrument, you really want to make sure you're not applying lateral pressure, like see if I were to play this B major and accidentally pull on the string sideways, see how I'm bending the strings there? That I'm gonna get, first of all, on the G string, I'm gonna get that kind of thing happening, and then I'm just gonna get out of tune chords if I'm accidentally bending notes. So um, be aware of that issue too. Like here, you might be kind of torquing your hand and like bending the E string like that, which means you're gonna get an out of tune chord. So watch out for string bending, finger positioning, and amount of pressure. And uh, I think that's all the things you have to think about. <laughs> It's really a mess of stuff. The other thing I wanted to mention is there's a lot of different plucking patterns you could use on this, not just right hand fingering, but the actual pattern in which you arpeggiate the chords. In this case, we're doing a very, very particular pattern, but there's a lot of other ways you could do this. One cool thing about this progression is that each voicing has a root fifth thing happening on the bottom, right? We got root fifth, root fifth, root fifth on all four chords. So you could do, you could do a root fifth alternating thing on the bottom and get a little country bumpkin walking line. Okay, which in a lot of styles is not useful, in some styles it is useful. You could do it as a waltz too. little runs or whatever. So there's a lot of modifications you can do to etudes like this. So I encourage you not only to do that with this etude, but seriously, think of a few chord voicings that you'd like to be better at and come up with your own little etude. It's lots of fun. And it's so much fun that the next couple lessons I present you with will be further explorations in the world of chordal etudes. Because if there's anything that speaks to the 21st century internet meme of quick, exciting things, it's etudes. Who doesn't love a good etude? So uh, <laughs> that's what we'll be doing. Got a couple more of those coming to you. Thank you for sticking around and for learning some bass with me. It's fun, isn't it? Oh, and uh, I know I'm gonna get comments about I can't play these chords because my hands aren't as big as yours, Josh. And um, I didn't invent these chord voicings. These are played by other people with smaller hands than me. So I wanna, what I wanna hear is not, Josh, I can't do it. It's, Josh, this is the fingering I came up with to make it work for my hands. So stop whining, start practicing, just like I do. I don't have anybody to whine to is the difference. Like I feel like whining too, but I just, I just have to practice instead. So I recommend you do the same thing. Whining's not gonna get you any better at the bass. 
And that's my philosophical life advice for the day. Thank you so much for watching. You can support me on Patreon or you can buy my books if you'd like to encourage me to continue putting out these free lessons on the old YouTube. Uh, I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you in the next thrilling Chordal Etude.